Good evening and welcome. Tonight we are going to be going over the history and geography of Almara Governorate and Almawit Governorate in Yemen. Now you can tell that these two places seem very different and very opposite. For one, they are on opposite ends of the country. One is very, very large. One is very, very small. One has a beautiful coastline. One does not. One has lots of barren desert regions, and the other is incredibly mountainous. They are very opposite, but what they do have in common is that they have some really incredible histories. And then we'll go look at them on Google Earth and show you some really cool spots. So let's start with Almara. Almara, as you can see, is in the farthest eastern section of Yemen. And it's quite large. And that's mostly because, and I know I've said this a lot in this series recently, there's not a lot there. The Rub al Khali empty quarter of the Arabian Desert kind of bleeds over into this region. If you don't know, the empty quarter is thusly named because it is empty. It is just sand as far as the eye can see. It gets pretty mountainous the further down you go, and it is very mountainous down here in this coastal area known as the Hadramaut. Hadramaut and it kind of goes all along the coast here are some really incredible mountains and coastal areas which creates a really interesting environment because you have this sea breeze blowing up along the coast against these mountains creates a very uh, forested foggy kind of region and then beyond that it's very barren all of that ocean air and fog rain and all of that does not go past these mountains over here. So the rest is very dry and barren. Not a lot going on up in the upper regions. Um, the capital is al Gaida, right here. And um, the other place that I'm going to show you on Google Earth is right here. You can barely see because it's just on the border with Oman, known as Hauf. It's a really neat place. I will show you what I mean when I talk about this kind of unique environment here along the mountains. But um, let's talk about the history of this area real quick. This is the ancestral home of the Odd Kingdom, which um, is a very ancient one going way back. Um, big traders, um, seafarers, all of that. Um, they existed for quite a while and it would kind of morph into the next phase of the ruling peoples here after intermarriages with various peoples of the Dofar and Hadramaut. It would eventually create the Meri people, M-E-H-R-I, I guess more like Meri. And um, once Islam became a factor, it would be become known as the Mara Sultanate. Now what's interesting about Islam in this region here is that the people who lived here, the Mary, heard about some guy up north in Medina and Mecca um, spouting about this new religion and talking to angels and all of that. So they sent someone up to investigate just what this Muhammad guy was talking about and they were like, oh, it's a new religion and it's it's something that we need to bring home and spread so that they did it's one of the very first regions that's not like part of like the northern saudi arabian area here that converted to islam but then they heard that the prophet passed away and they were like well there goes that and they switched back to their old polytheistic pagan religion and the successor to Muhammad, Abu Bakr, was like, it's not how this works. So he waged what's known as the Ridda Wars, 
which was essentially Abu Bakr going through the areas that un um, became what's the word I'm looking for that deconverted I suppose from Islam to reconvert them back so that is what happened here the area became Islamic again and has ever since and has been ever since the Mar Sultanate gained a reputation for being extremely fierce fighters and these fighters would go all over the Arab world to help out the highest bidder with wars, kind of like the the Swiss back in the day before they became neutral. Um, they fought all over the place and in fact when they were hired to fight up in what's now like modern Egypt, they brought their camels with them and the people there had not seen camels before. So it was because of the Mar Sultanate that camels were introduced into northern Africa, which I think is pretty neat because it's hard to, um, you know, imagine northern African cultures without camels, right? It's so integral to their lifestyle. It's very, very neat. The Sultanate would slowly expand via conquest throughout what's now Yemen. And they even, oh, you can't see it. Let me slide this page up a little. They even conquered the island of Socotra. There it is. Socotra. It's just to the south here. Um, but um, that would change in 1886 when they were pressured to join the Aden Protectorate which was a British organized protectorate trying to make some unity out of the, the puzzle pieces of sultanates in this area. Um, the, you know, things would change quite drastically, but um, it wasn't until 1967 when it would really change because that's when Yemen um, became independent from the British and split into North Yemen and South Yemen. South Yemen was a Marxist-Leninist state and this whole region became part of South Yemen. And they immediately started to redraw lines and this area lost Socotra. Socotra became its own governorate. And, um, you know, as you can imagine, um, extreme socialism and traditional nomadic Islamic sultanate culture don't really mix very well. So, um, the people here weren't, you know, kind of excited about it, but, um, the people here are also mostly just farmers and things, so as long as it didn't bother them. Of course, in the 1990s, the two would unify and become just plain old Yemen, <laughs> no north or south. There has been quite a civil war happening over in this region of Yemen. It's never really reached this part of Yemen, so while um, the coastal area, the Tiamat and the Aden area, Sana, have been dealing with civil war and famine and fighting and bombing, this area really hasn't. It hasn't made it all the way over here. It's just kind of been business as usual. There are some tensions with the borders with Saudi Arabia, but nothing like we see over here. And that is essentially the history of Al Mara. Hopping over here to Al Mawit. Um, you know, finding stuff about history here was a little interesting because this area has been inhabited for thousands upon thousands of years. Little has changed in this area. It was even part of what's believed to be the Kingdom of Sheba. And um, the reason that life never really changed until the um, independence of Yemen in, you know, the 1960s was that this area is incredibly mountainous. They are the Haraz Mountains that cut through this region here. Very, very high peaks, very, very hard to get to. Um, the, it was a pretty isolated culture for pretty much all of history until, like I said, the 
um, independence of Yemen, the split, and, you know, all, all of the, the political intricacies that were involved in that. So, even though this has this really cool history in this little region here, it's not much to really describe because, um, it was, um, some interesting, like, farming and pottery making and just very traditional ways of life for almost as long as human history, right? Not much has changed up here until that civil war that I mentioned that is still ongoing. Um, well, it doesn't really seem that like the hardcore fighting is happening here because like I said, it is mountains, not the best place to fight a war. It has been scarred terribly by the war. There has been um, some terrible attacks on the villages up here, destroying buildings that are thousands upon thousands, like predating Islam, a few years old, right? And um, the famine that struck Yemen in, what was it, 2007, 2017, 2018, around that time, um, hit this area particularly hard because it's already very difficult to get supplies and things up through to the mountains. When there's a shortage of supplies, it's even more dire. So, um, very interesting history, but I don't have much to tell you because it's just kind of been the way it was for a very long time. So let me show you on Google Earth these really cool places. And like I said, very different, apologies, but um, very Yemeni, right? One thing that they definitely have in common is that they have that very traditional Yemeni culture. So here is Almara. Let me zoom out first so you can see exactly where we are in the world if you're not quite sure where Yemen is located. Yemen is on the very south of the Arabian Peninsula here, jutting out into the Arabian Sea and the Indian Ocean. You can see the Gulf of Aden here and the Red Sea right here. We've got Africa. Um, Iran and the Middle East up there, and Asia and Europe. That is where we are. Oh, Mara, the slideshow was not great, so I just wanted you to see up from above and to see the fact that, like, not much going on in this landscape. You can see the desert creeping in there, and it is very rocky, very dry. You can see these amazing wadis making kind of lightning-shaped marks across the landscape here. You get little villages and things, but they don't have any pictures because they're so tiny. Like, where's the village? I guess it's in the shadow of these rocks here. Put on 3D, I want to see. Oh my. In the craters of this, the rocks are up here. How interesting. The village is right there. So yeah, that's the majority of the landscape of this region. Big wadis and lots of rocks, but as we move farther and farther south, the landscape will change. Let's get situated here. Here is the capital of Al-Qaeda. Big old bustling place here. And, um, you know, I wish I could show you more places, but not much to show you on Google Earth. Let me see the slideshow real quick. Yeah, just some modern looking buildings here. Not terribly exciting pictures to show you. But then we move down to the coast. So there's some pretty estuaries here. You can see what this um, coastal area looks like. Very dry and rocky, meeting the beautiful ocean. It is very nice, isn't it? But let's move over to the mountains. Here they are. So we get these really neat little coastal towns here. And it doesn't look like much from above, but once we go in, let me put on 3D too. You can see that. See the landscape start to change into much more um, kind of green and lush over here. Making sure I'm not going into Oman. 
No, okay. Here's what I'm talking about. Here we go. I promise you. Look at the greenery up here. Very, very different from what we were just looking at. You can see all of this towns down here with all of these beautiful forests and trees up here. And then we're going to head over to Hauf. And look at this. Isn't this gorgeous? Look at the fog rolling in. Beautiful bright green landscape. My goodness, it's gorgeous. It's a bunch of pictures all at once. Some ancient wells here, it looks like. Beautiful waterfalls cascading off the mountains, swimming in the, the pools of water there. Some interesting terraced farming here alongside this very old looking village. It's very, very beautiful. It's giving Machu Picchu, isn't it? But hold on to that thought because Almawi does much more Machu Picchu. Look at this camel reaching up. Very gorgeous landscape here. Look at that with the traditional towers. Very cool. If we zoom in a little, hopefully it pops up. Just thinking about it. To see kind of the forest park. Is it going to pop up so I can click on it? I guess not. <laughs> Bummer. A closer look at all the trees, but this slideshow showed you just very very lovely this region is very lush and beautiful right you would have never guessed <laughs> based on how everything oh, here it is i was a little off that's not it <laughs> where is it that's not it is it no see when i'm trying to find slideshows that's what pops up when i'm like there's not much to show you it's because there's no pictures there That's pretty cool. I don't think I've seen the slideshow. Beautiful coastal area. It's all nice and green. You get the idea, right? Isn't that gorgeous? It's not the thing you think of when I... Oh, cue the camel. When I'm like, you know, imagine Yemen's landscape. You don't picture this kind of landscape. That camel is so pretty. Oh, how sweet. I love these camels. All right. That's a sufficient slideshow this old gas station. That's very haunting. But there we are. Here it is. Hauf Nature Reserve. I finally found it. The one I've been trying to show you. I just should have looked a little harder. The sweet camels. That's the best, I think. This beautiful foresty landscape. Looks like you could find it in like even South America, you know, and then there's just camels wandering around. That's amazing, isn't it? This place is so beautiful. And you would never guess being near the, the Tofar and Hunter Mount. Very, very cool. Alright, let's head to the other end of the country. There we go. Let's zoom over to... Let's find it. Uh, Maui. Now, let me show you the slideshow first so you can get an idea of what it looks like, like, from eye level, right? These amazing ancient structures here. Very traditional Yemeni tower buildings. You can tell just by looking at them, they are quite old, aren't they? Very ancient. Like, you see the Machu Picchu reference now, right? <laughs> Look at this tower. That is amazing. You can tell that once upon a time it was like very, very intricate. You can still see it, but um, I think time has faded some of the coloration. Very beautiful. This old village here next to these old rocks. Little waterfalls up in the mountains. Very, very cool. But um, I'm going to show you what it looks like from Google Earth 3D view, so you can get a sense of just how mountainous this area is. Look at this. The, like, extreme, extreme mountains here. This is why it's been so remote and untouched for so long, because it is very high up 
in the mountains. I want to show you this village, even though it's like on the border, half of it is in the next government governorate over. But it's like one of the very old, old, old traditional towns that hasn't been touched since the late 20th century. Look at this work. So beautiful. And I imagine these people have just been living the same lifestyle for thousands of years, right? The same living style, the same kind of handicrafts, same foods, same festivals. There's that tower. And just, you know, being very culturally traditional. And you can see the damage that's been caused to this area. It's an old photograph. It says 2022, but it looks very old-timey. Very, very amazing. We, no, we are up in the mountains here. Very remote. And you can see from the landscape here, the terraced farming that they've had. And you know, well, that's in the other governorate. But, um... All over the place here. Look at this. You can tell that it's been like that for probably forever, right? That they've had terraced farms all along the countryside here. Or the mountainside, I should say, right? It's so incredible. It's a very small little area, so I don't want to wander too far and wind up in the other places, but we are up in the mountains, and as you can see, there's not a lot of life here. Looks like there's a little something right there, right here, a little farm. Um, no big bustling cities here. It is up in the mountains. Some farming areas here, a little area there. Very remote, but very, very beautiful, isn't it? Look at the farm areas. It's so cool, right? But anyway, that is what I wanted to And again, anything else just doesn't have photos associated with it, so I can't really show you much. But that's going to be it for tonight. I hope that you enjoyed this content tonight, and if you did and you aren't subscribed, please consider doing so. We're going to every little corner of the world, and next we are going to be heading to Sudan over in Africa. So be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out. I hope that you found this video relaxing and educational, and I hope that you have a very good, 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 good night. Good night.